Hey there friends, I'm Leo and welcome to the next chapter into the series for the Project Clockwork devlogs. Today I have a lot of new exciting stuff to show you that um, is stuff that I was working on and I have a lot of new groundwork that I created so that I can build upon that. I remade some stuff that I did such as the clothing that you used and I made an enemy that has a the base for a new artificial intelligence system that I'm creating. I remade the interface and um, I have a new dialogue system that is working in Tandrum with a questing system. You can forage ground objects and there's a new weapon of a new type which is fire and um, let's get into it. So let's start off with the blacksmith NPC and I have a video where I showcase um, how I made him a little bit and just a little bit of the, the process that I went to to create this character. And um, he doesn't have anything much to him in terms of programming and uh, a lot of logic um, so far. In the future I plan on having a lot more stuff for this character to do in terms of going to work and having a schedule with the day and night cycle. But as of right now the only thing this character does is pick up his hammer and start working. The idea here is that in the future this character is going to have multiple side quests that you can do to know him better and to become friends with him, right? So in the end you will have a different perception of this character that you used to have and you will have different um, perks for being his friend. He's going to uh, help you out on a lot of blacksmithing stuff. You will have the, the, the profession of a blacksmith that you will be able to pursue and you can even work for this character and in the future uh, you could even buy his blacksmithing shop and he would be working for you for scraps. The second thing we're going to be looking at is the boar enemies. Um, I wanted to start off this component that has a character a artificial intelligence already built into that so this boar doesn't have pretty much nothing um, in terms of programming for him um, custom built. Right, all of the stuff that I programmed here on this board, I can reutilize on anything that I want. I, I just used a lot of different components. So you have this sensing component that is from Unreal itself, where the character is looking forward, or you know, it has a, a hearing space where it can hear what you're doing if you want to. Um, but I don't have that functionality implemented. So here's how the character works. It's just going to be roaming around and if you come close to it, it's going to be alerted. And when it is alerted, it's going to, to start looking at you, kind of indicating that you need to move away. And if you don't move away, it's going to start uh, attacking you using the patterns that I made on that component. So if you stay close to the character, he's going to be pissed at you and is going to start running at you to try, to try and uh, attack you. And then you can kill it for loot, right? So it just dropped three of this rocky meat. That is the, the normal resource that drops out of these mobs. Now, another thing that you can do on this build is that you can find these mushrooms on the floor and you can interact with them to collect and um, you can forage different ground objects. And in the future, I'm going to have bushes with different fruits that you can collect for quests and anything of the sort. I've also spent some time to make new weapons and to remake some of the clothing sets that I think it, they weren't very good compared to the blacksmith because I was using one way to paint these objects but then I changed it to another way of painting and I just remade all of the base clothing using this new method of painting. I also wanted to have different weapons with different effects so that I can control the different damage types that these weapons will give. Some weapons will give more damage, some weapons will have different stats than others. Some of them will be fire, some of them will use shock. And um, I wanted to test all of these mechanics by having two weapons that are different. I've also made a backpack slot that you can have on your character and every time you find a backpack in the world you can equip it and you will be using a, a backpack that is going to give you extra inventory slots or some other miscellaneous passive abilities. 
So my idea here is that maybe in the future I can make, for example, a turret that is attached to your back. So then you can come over here and equip this turret and it's going to be um, looking for enemies constantly and it's going to be a moving turret that is just with you all the time. Now another use for this could be, for example, a jetpack where you can double jump and you can start gliding away with your jetpack that you just equipped. Now another of these slots that I made is for the pouches. Now pouches are going to give you extra um, inventory slots but they can also serve to give you some passive abilities as well, like trinkets. Imagine in World of Warcraft you have trinkets, right? It, it would be something like that. It can give you uh, a shield every 5 seconds, uh, a shield that recharges every 5 seconds, and you can um, equip these different combinations of pouches to get, to, to get the best passive abilities that you want. Of course that you have all of the other slots as well. You have shirts and pants, gloves, shoes, you have belts, you have um, glasses. For example, I can put these other glasses. And you have hats, which for now I just have this Barret that I wanted to try it out and see if it works. Now the only ones that are left for me to program are these ones on the bottom. And these ones are going to be for pets and companions as I'm calling them. Those pets are going to be, for example, there's um, one of the subscribers is on the Discord server and he made these awesome concept arts and I'm going to transform that into a, a actual pet and I'm going to have it so that you can equip those pets and they will be following you around and helping you either by shooting at enemies or by finding objects and um, you can have pretty much any programming that you want on these uh, companions. Now let's move on to the dialogue options. Uh, when you get close to an NPC you can press E and you will talk to him and this dialogue box is gonna pop up and it's going to start talking to you and you can choose a bunch of different options that you can talk. For example, um, can I work at the forge? You can ask and then he's going to be talking and you can press E to skip to the next one and you can also, for example, get any new quests like this. Do you have any quests for me? He's going to give you a quest asking you to gather some wild mushrooms for him. So if you press tab and you open your quest log, you can open the tasty mushrooms quest and now that quest is focused. Because that quest is focused, you have this tasty mushrooms quest on the, the left corner there and that quest requires you to gather some mushrooms. Okay, so now I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into how I'm programming the game because what is very important to me is to make very um, a very solid foundation right now so that I have a very solid game afterwards. So here's how I'm programming everything. Um, I'm going to just open up this board to, to show you guys the, how I made it, right? So I have the movement, which is allowing the character to move. I have this combatant component. So this combatant component is responsible for all of the artificial intelligence the character is going to have. So let's say that I just created this character and I wanted to add a new combatant component. So I can add one. Now over here I can specify which is going to be his behavior. I don't have everything programmed yet, but the idea is that I can just come over here and choose what I want. So for example, the basic attack behavior for it, is, is it going to be ranged melee? Is it going to be a hybrid between two? Or is it just going to charge at you like a, a, a rhinoceros or something like that? So I'm going to make it, for example, melee. Uh, what is the reaction behavior for this character? Is it going to be pacific, meaning that it, it's never going to attack you, and when you attack it, it's going to run away from you? Is it aggressive, meaning that when you come close to it, it is going to try and attack you? Or is it balanced? A balanced character just means that it's not going to attack you outright, but if you attack it, it's going to attack you back. Now, here's the walk speed, the run speed, uh, the idle duration is, um, this idle duration min and max is just 
to keep track of um, when the, the character stops moving, how long is it going to be idle for, and I just make a, a random value between those two, and I set this as the value of him to, to stay idle, right? Now this aggro alert is important because this the, the smaller this number is, the closer you can get to the character before it starts getting angry at you. And this attack alert distance, meaning when when it sees you, how long do you have to run before it loses interest? This is the alert duration, the, the time that it's going to be looking at you and being alerted. And um, this widget is just to, to spawn that little exclamation mark. But now also, on top of all of that, I want to program a special attacks behavior. Now, you see over here I have this special attacks, I can create uh, a new one, and I can have, for example, charging special attack, where every now and then the character is going to charge at you. Or I can have this spawn adds um, sort of behavior, where if I click over here, every now and then this mob is going to spawn other mobs that I can specify. I just haven't programmed this part yet, but that's how it's supposed to work. And um, I can have, for example, both of them if I want. I can have a mob that charges at you and spawn mobs. Um, because I can just kind of randomize this a little bit in the component. So this just makes it a lot easier for me to work with all of the, the behavior of characters. Now, another thing that I'm making, for example, in terms of the component modularity that I'm creating is this morph... Uh, morph blink component that I made where it basically calculates from a random time and it's going to make your character blink now you when uh, when I say blink I mean this thing right here I want the character to be able to blink so I just created this morph target inside of blender and then using this component I can just make the character blink whenever I want to uh, and it's just going to normally blink. Also, another thing that I'm using, for example, is the health component. This health component is going to be responsible for receiving damage and to calculate which weapon type is damaging me and um, what are my strengths and my weaknesses. For example, I can set up it in a way that when I create a new character, I can set it so that it is weak to fire, but then it is strong against thunder. And I can have all of that very dynamically and very customizable where I can reuse that on everything. So everyone that can ever take damage in my game will have a health component. For example, the player has a quests component that is going to list all of the quests that you have completed already, all of the quests that you are currently doing, and uh, a combination of both to check on some stuff to not allow you to pick on the same quest twice. So I'd like to say that we did a lot of progress on this devlog and I'm looking forward to making a lot more progress in terms of ranged weapons, um, finishing this dialogue component, making the pets and the companions, and having all of that working with a quest system that is finished, where you can deliver the quests and get loot from them. Now, I, I'm facing a couple of issues with the boar, where it just doesn't... Um, the fur kind of crashes the game when I when I package it, so it basically works very uh, works normally when I'm playing inside of Unreal, but as soon as I compile the game and I package it, it just stops working. And I already know what the error is. Um, I've kind of I made a uh, I've made it in a way that it works, but it's not ideal. The animations are a little bit wonky on the board. But I've already sent a message to the team that developed this plugin for the fur, and I think I'm going to get it all sorted before next devlog. So that's nothing to worry about, it's just a minor glitch, and um, yeah. Speaking of next devlog, you guys can keep track of everything that I'm doing by just going over the Trello board for the project and there you can just see anything that I'm working on currently, anything that I, that I have a, as a plan for the future and you can keep track of all of that in the Trello board.
If you want to get involved into the project and submit to me any ideas that you have, you can also join the Discord server for the project and you can maybe even have some of your concept into the game and um, I'm even going to give you a credit at the, the, the end of the game, of course. Now, if you want to support me on working full-time on this dream project, you can head over to my Patreon. Any pledge would be extremely helpful and I'm going to be listing your name in the, the, the end of each devlog that I make as a form of saying thank you. Of course, you also get some exclusive Discord roles and you get access to the Patreon-only chat. Also, I want to thank my very special first Patreon called Django. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing your name right. So um, yeah, thank you so much. So we've reached the end of another devlog. If you guys have any suggestions or any feedback, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I'll be responding to every single one of them. Thank you so much for the support and the attention. You guys are very kind and uh, I was very happy with the performance of the first devlog and the blacksmithing, uh, the blacksmith character video. So uh, yeah, thank you so much. I'm Leo and I'll see you on the next devlog.